beautiful Sunday morning. I went to the Grant and Dairy breakfast this morning, and I'm back. So I figured I'd do a quick show. I figured 7 a.m. might be a little too early for you guys, but 10 a.m. Central Time, perfect. Um, so let's get started. I uh, hope everyone's having a great Sunday morning. I got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Got 17 boxes to open up today. Show y'all what kind of interesting stuff I've been buying. All right, book number one. Let's see what we got. All right, 50 fa 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 Favorite Fairy Tales by Andrew Lang. Really nice. This one's not too old, but it is a really pretty leather binding on it. Let's see, 1963. Let's see if there's any binding mark. Yep, there we go. Looks like Hatchards Limited Piccadilly is the bookbinder stamp right there. And again, a really great leather binding on that one. Let's see, yep, it is illustrated. The House in the Woods. The Story of the Seven Simmons. Far, far away, beyond all sorts of countries, seas, and rivers, three stood. There stood a, pl a splendid city where lived King Arch, Archidej. Archidej. Who was a good who, who was as good as he was rich and handsome. His great army was made up of men ready to obey his his slightest wish. He owned forty times forty cities. And in each city, he had 10 palaces with silver doors. Very cool. Uh, 1963 Book of Fairy Tales by Andrew Lang. Really beautiful. Signed leather binding on that one. I like that. All right, box number two. 16 boxes to go. Hopefully make this, uh, get this video done in less than an hour. Hope everyone's having a great Sunday morning. you're not following me on whatnot check me out um animal vet 52 on whatnot i have an antique book sale uh tomorrow morning sunday or no sunday night sorry sunday night at 7 p.m uh, i have 40 antique books ready to go uh some nice old leather bibles um i think some medical books a little bit of everything some charles dickens some shakespeare really nice stuff Welcome, welcome. Feel free to leave a comment in the chat if you can hear me all right. I hope it sounds good for everyone. It's like unwrapping a Christmas present. There we go. Finally to the middle. All right. This is part of our American Holiday Series. This is the Christmas book. Still haven't took the time to figure out how many books are in this series. Christmas, its origin, celebration, and significance as related in prose and verse. Edited by Robert Haven Schaffler, 1915. Uh, and this one's really nice. Most of the copies I see have library markings. Um, and this one does not, so that's great. Christmas Eve by Hamilton Wright, maybe. The world has been full of mysteries today. Everybody has gone about weighted with secrets. The children's faces have fairy, fairly shown with expectancy. And as I enter easily into the universal dream, which at this moment holds all the children of Christendom under its spell. One sec, I got to turn my notifications off. I don't want those to blare in your ear. If someone sends me a text or something or something's going on on eBay. Holy buckets. It's always surprising when someone will send a book like this with no protection. I think I paid $150 for this and they just chucked it in a bubble mailer. But it looks like it arrived safely. All 
All right, some inquiries concerning the first inhabitants, language, religion, learning, and letters of Europe. That one was published in 1758 in Oxford. Let's see. We are assured from the very best authority that a uh, foreign age or two after the flood, the whole world was of one speech. And that this unity was broken about the time of the dispersion of mankind. Since the first uh, confusion of tongues, reason experience teach us that languages like streams flowing from the same fountain for a while continue pure and unmixed till by deviating from each other in their courses and by receiving adventurous supplies, they become at last entirely different. The near door, therefore, we can trace them to the fountainhead, the greater affinity we find between them. Very interesting old book. Interesting, interesting. Welcome, Sean. I am just unboxing some old books this morning, showing you uh, some of my online purchases. All right, I think these are all mostly 17th century. Uh, what is that, Latin? I think that's Latin. Uh, published in 1722. Check out the frontispiece. Where are you from, Sean? Again, 1722 book in Latin. Hong Kong, awesome. I'm in the U.S. in Marshfield, Wisconsin. Dang, that's pretty cool. I have a viewer in Hong Kong. All right, this one's a little beat up. Uh, looks like another book in... I think that's Latin, but I don't really know. Might be Greek. Again, a cool frontispiece. That one was published in 1739 in Edinburgh. Uh, the Spirit of Laws by Montesquieu. This is volume one, published in 1752. Very cool book. Cool book of philosophy. Uh, General Reflections on the State of Rome after the Expulsion of its King. It is impossible ever to be tired with, with so agreeable a subject as ancient Rome. Even at present, strangers leave the modern palaces of that celebrated capital to go in search of ruins. Thus, the eye, after resting itself on the enameled uh, meadows, is pleased at the sight of rocks and mountains. Very cool. Spirit of Laws, Volume 2, 1752. Uh, most of these will be up on eBay probably in about two weeks. I'm eBay seller Animal at 52. I always have interesting stuff going up on eBay. And actually, I'll show you one thing. Give me two seconds. So I think starting next, what is today? Today's Sunday. I think next Saturday, no, nope, not next Saturday. Next Friday, I believe, I am auctioning off the Pride and Prejudice Peacock Edition. Uh, this is the 1894 first edition Peacock Edition, nicely illustrated. Uh, it's in really nice condition. And this is going on my eBay page starting at 99 cents, no reserves. Um, it's probably about a $2,000 book. 
uh, and it will be up on eBay starting at 99 cents. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Peacock Edition. This is the one everyone wants. You might get yourself a deal. Again, eBay seller Animal at 52. You're not going to want. If you want a copy of this and don't want to spend three, four, five thousand dollars, check it out. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, that one's awesome, Sean. Uh, another looks like a Latin poetry book from. 1739 someone wrote 1789 but that's definitely 1739 again with the cool frontispiece oh look at him very distinguished got the gentleman playing the harp the gentleman uh copying a manuscript it looks like and the gentleman with a olive branch or some sort of branch again all of these uh, 18th century book will be up on eBay probably in about two weeks. Uh, Sean, I start them at 99 cents. Obviously, I hope they they bring more than 99 cents. Uh, I just like starting uh, cheap starting prices. All right, we got Poemata Octora by Nicolay Harding. Uh, published in London in 1780. Again, I think that's Latin. Cool Latin poetry book. The Head of the Stake. Okay, so it looks like it's in... Uh, that one's in English, but that one's in Latin. On the head of the stag from Waller's poems. So we saw an antique hero's strength, learned by his lance's weight and length, as their vast beams express the beast, whose shady brows alive they dress, dressed. Such game while yet the world was new, the mighty Nimrod did pursue. What huntsmen of the feeble race, our dogs, dare such a monster chase? Resembling with each blow he strikes the charge of a whole row of pikes. O fertile head with every year, could such a crop of wonder beer? The teeming earth did never bring so soon, so hard, so huge a thing. Okay. Cool poetry book from 1739. All right, last one for this box. Let's see what we got. Oh, another book in Latin. I, I think it's Latin. It could be Greek. Not 100% sure. Looks like it was published in Oxford in 1723. Again, don't know too much about these, except they're very old. Nice condition. Old leather books. I have to do a little Googling to figure out a little bit more about those before I list them. unique packaging job on this one all right let's see what we got in here it's like Christmas morning and all I got for Christmas is books I'm not disappointed We have a huge pic, uh, picturesque Palestine, Sinai, and Egypt. Big, beautiful two-volume set. Really nice condition. It has some scuffs, but still, I mean, overall, very good condition. Um, a lot of these, you know, they're just such massive books, such oversized books that the bindings and the cover hinges did not always survive. But these, um, I mean... Definitely survived very nicely. I think they're from the 1780s. We'll see here in a second. What the heck? All right. Well, we have a little mishap. There definitely was supposed to be two volumes of this. Um, I bought a two-volume set of picturesque Palestine, Sinai, Egypt. There's volume two. 
And then it looks like the seller made a mistake and sent me construction methods, 1933. So, whoops, gonna have to figure out how that mistake happened. But at least I got volume two for now, um, but volume one is coming. So I will have the nice two volume set of picturesque Palestine, Sinai, Egypt, volume two. I don't know if this one, it's copyright uh, 1883. And again, huge books. Let's see if I can show you some of the great illustrations and plates in this book. Looks like really nicely illustrated. And darn, only got volume two for now, but volume one should hopefully be on its way soon. I'm not sure how they mixed up that book uh, with volume one, but mistakes happen. We'll have to get that sorted out at some point. Thank you all for watching here on a Sunday morning. Hope everyone has a great day. I think I'm gonna take this afternoon off. I do have to mow some lawn. It's been so wet here in Wisconsin. Everything's getting overgrown. leather bible beautiful cover design on that one it's big and bulky and heavy it's probably about almost four inches thick a uh, really solid condition i mean such a vast majority of these big leather bibles the covers are falling off they just too large of a book to survive. But this one is in very good condition. Let's see if I can find the title page for you. Um, a new devotional and explanatory pictorial family binding. This is the super fine edition. Um, bum, bum, bum. Over 2,500 illustrations. Uh, some of these big Bibles. Um, have a highly illustrated, looks like copyright 1879. I think that's a nine. Um, but, uh, scoot it over. So um, a lot of these old Bibles from the 1870s to 1890s have a Bible dictionary in the front. That just as, I mean, like I said, over 2,500 illustrations in this one. Um, it also has plates throughout. But like, look at all those illustrations right now and maps. Oh, that was a Gustave Doré illustration. I recognize that one. Uh, again, it has everything on the geology, the culture, the history, the animals, the geography, the culture, the footwear, the fashion, the dress. Oh, there was um, David and Goliath. Not sure if I'm going to be able to find that one for you again. There we go. David slays Goliath. Again, very cool. Beautiful binding on that one. And I think it was 1879. I couldn't quite reach uh, read the nine, but I think that's what that last number was. Uh, I think I'll pile some of these over here out of the way. This one came from DeWolf and Wood. Uh, they're a big bookseller over in Maine. They always have great eBay auctions uh, going on their eBay page. And I'm sure they have a website and they go to book fairs. Uh, I met one of the gentlemen a couple years ago at the Twin Cities Book Fair. All right, we have a really nice copy of Life and Death and Rebel Prisons. Life and Death in Rebel Prisons, giving a complete history of the inhumane and barbarous, barbarous, bar, barbarous treatment of our brave soldiers by rebel authorities, inflicting terrible suffering and frightful mortal, moral, mortality, principally at Andersonville, Georgia, and Florence South, Florence, South Carolina, by Robert Kellogg. This one does have 
several illustrations published in 1865. And again, not a rare book, but this one definitely is in better than average condition. Um, I mean, you can get a beat up copy for about 15 or 20 bucks. A nice copy might run you 75 to 100. Again, happy Sunday to everyone. Oh, we got a nice copy of Decorum. It's been a couple months since I've sold one of these. Decorum, a practical treatise on etiquette and dress of the best American society, 1881. Show you some of the chapters. Entrance into society, introductions, salutations, social intercourse, conversation, visits, dinner parties and balls, street etiquette, riding and driving, traveling, etiquette of the public place, letter writing, courtship and marriage, domestic etiquette and duties, table etiquette, Miscellaneous Rules of Etiquette, Washington Etiquette, Anniversary Weddings, Funerals, Dress, The Toilet, and Toilet Recipes. Let's see what we got for toilet recipes. To remove freckles, wrinkles, discoloration of the skin, sunburn to cure, uh, child blains, hair curling fluid to prevent hair, hair falling out. So that one has some interesting uh, cosmetic type recipes. They call them toilet recipes. But yeah, that's um, one of the more interesting Victorian era fashion and etiquette books. Um, more, more etiquette and manners than fashion, but there's a few chapters on um, dress and fashion as well. Children of Dune. I think these are all book club editions. But again, with uh, the second movie coming out, everyone's looking to, to get the Dune books and read them. Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. Copyright 1976. Again, this is a book club edition. Um, I attempted to read the first Dune book uh, last fall. And I think I made it like 100 pages in, but I did have to give up. Just did not find it very interesting. And I haven't really read much sci-fi, but couldn't get into it. Paul of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin Anderson. Looks like that one is copyright 2008. Really nice condition. Again, all of these I think will be on eBay here in about two weeks. Uh, the God Emperor Dune again by Frank Herbert. One of the earlier books. It is a book club edition. That one's copyright 1981. Again, book club edition. Pretty nice condition with a dust jacket. Um, I don't know what these three are. These three I set aside like a week and a half ago. I do not remember what I bought. So we shall see. Oh, Independence Day, another one of the Our American Holidays books. Um, so there's Independence Day, there's the 4th of July, there's Christmas, Halloween, Easter, Flag Day, um, Independence Day. I think there's the 4th of July one, um, President's Day. And there might be like three or four more that I'm not remembering right now, but I'm trying to, I, I can't tell you how many of those I bought in the last year, a lot. I probably have multiple full sets. I'm trying to put sets together. I think the, the most exciting for the Our American Holiday ones and the most expensive, therefore, are uh, Christmas, and uh, Christmas and Halloween seem to be the most expensive ones. Those are the ones that everyone wants. All right, looks like we got two volumes of the works of Washington Irving, volume one and two of Knickerbockers, New York. Uh, History of New York from the beginning of the world to the end of the Dutch dynasty by Diedrich Knickerbocker. I don't know why they put that on there, but it's actually by Washington Irving in two volumes, published in 1835. 
Uh, not horrible for 1835 Washington Irving. I mean, the cover hinges are starting to split, but the covers are still attached. Looks like tight bindings. Pretty nice. I tried to do a weekly unboxing video, but apparently I haven't been buying anything too exciting on eBay. So this is two weeks of the more interesting purchases. All right, looks like we got two more uh, works of Washington. We got the Sick Etch book, which is, that's one that everyone wants. Um, they like the kind of Western American history ones. They like the sketchbook. They like the history of New York, obviously. Oh, this one's a little little rougher, I would say, regarding uh, condition. Sketchbook of Jeffrey Crayon, uh, Crayon in two volumes by Washington Irving, published in 1835. So this one has the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Um, so that's one of the reasons people really like this one. Also, it has all kinds of other stuff on Christmas and hunting and farming and horses and Rip Van Winkle, that's another story in this that people like. Yeah, I would say Rip Van Winkle and Legend of Sleepy Hollow are probably the more exciting uh, works in the sketchbook by Washington Irving. Definitely sell a lot of those. But I don't think I've had any sketchbooks for a few months, so those will be up on eBay here in about two weeks. Looks like someone sent us some Bush's Baked Beans. All right, all right. I'd, I'd be happy with some Bush's Baked Beans right now. Oh, original flavor. Okay. They have about 20 different flavors to choose from now. It's been a while since I've bought any, but I do love me some Bush's Baked Beans. As a matter of fact, this video is sponsored by Bush's Baked Beans. What a great coincidence. of the house of david cool old religious book from the time of jesus very cool got the angel there on the spine got the dove and all the beautiful decorations there on the spine the prince of the house of david or three years in the holy city being a series of letters of adina a jewess of alexandria Supposed to be subjoining in Jerusalem in the days of Herod, addressed to the father, to her father, a wealthy Jew in Egypt, and relating as if by an eyewitness all the scenes and wonderful incidents of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, from his baptism in Jordan to his crucifixion, crucifixion in Calvary, by Reverend J. H. Ingram, 1859. Got to show you the beautiful frontispiece or decorative title page there and then frontispiece here what do we got a view of jerusalem the holy city and suburb wow check out the ancient city of jerusalem there very interesting old religious book thank you all for watching so far feel free to throw a comment if you got any questions oh charles is here hey charles how's it going sunday morning are you working yet Let's see what charles has to say yeah, I, I've I've got some books in cereal boxes. I don't think and diaper boxes are pretty common for shipping books. Uh, Bush's baked beans, I think that's a first. Charles, are you coming to my whatnot show tomorrow? I got forty antique books you might like. Speaking of that, everyone check me out on Whatnot, Animal Vet 52 on Whatnot. If you don't know what not, what Whatnot is, you can Google it. Um, it's a live video auction website just like this. I'm show off the books and auction them off. It's pretty cool. 
I have an antique book show uh, tomorrow night at 7. My favorite rack show. Ancient Monarchies. I'm going to get the other two volumes out. Oh, you got a live auction in Sparta. Is that, that's the one you were telling me about, I think. That one should be fun. Archery supplies, right? I do sort of miss going to auctions. Um, I don't think I've been to a live auction in about three years now. It's kind of tough for me to get away from the store. Got to pay someone to work here all day. And live auctions are pretty hit and miss. Yeah, the archery store that went out of business. All right, we got beautiful set Ancient Monarchies by George Rawlingson. Nice three volume set. Really great condition. Check out the marbled page edges. Boom. Beautiful. Okay, we got a couple different book plates inside the cover. We've got VA. That's a very unique uh, book plate there. And then we got X Library for Freeman. Got the books and the owl there. This one is definitely much more modern. This one might be a 19th century book plate. All right, the five great monarchies of the ancient Eastern world or the history, geography, and antiquities of Chaldea, Assyria, Babylon, Media, and Persia by George Rawlingson. Second edition in three volumes, 1871. Uh, I think these books are full of illustrations and maps and stuff. There you go, fold that one out for you. Uh, this is volume three that I'm showing you right now. Oh, maybe they're not illustrated. Okay, just kidding. They're not illustrated. Oh, no, there were some illustrations. Okay, they're sporadically illustrated. And again, really nice three volume set. Ancient Monarchies by George Rawlingson, 18, what is it, 1870? I don't remember. My brain is so fried. 1871. With maps and illustrations. Again, great book on ancient history. George Rawlington was a very uh, ancient um, historian. Dig into archaeology. He wrote quite a few books. All right, up next. What do we got? This one's kind of heavy. Again, I try to do a weekly live unboxing video, but I haven't been buying much on eBay. All right, well, that one's pretty banged up. Building of the Nation, cool book on American history. Pretty, pretty pretty well on the rough side we have redeeming the republic cool civil war volume redeeming the republic the third period of the war of the rebellion in the year 1864 by charles carlton coffin illustrated i think 1880s yep 1889 and again these uh charles coffin books are really highly illustrated tons and tons of maps and illustrations in these uh, so this one covers the last period of the Civil War, but then there's one for the beginning of the Civil War, one for the middle. And let's see, here we have Marching to Victory. Maybe there's four. I thought there was three, but there could be four. Marching to Victory, the second period of the War of the Rebellion, including the year 1863. Uh, again, by Mr. Coffin, illustrated. Got General Grant there on the frontispiece, copyright 1888. Again, really nicely illustrated. Again, these will all be on eBay here in about two weeks. Again, feel free to hit that like button, throw a comment down there if you got any questions for me. Uh, Freedom Triumphant. Let's see, the fourth period of the War of the Rebellion, again by Mr. Coffin. Got a frontispiece of Mr. Coffin right there. That's what he looks like. That one's 1890. Once again, very nicely illustrated. Tons and tons of battle illustrations and portraits and maps. 
great, great books. Uh, the green that you see them a lot in the blue, um, like that first one. Uh, this style binding is really, really common for the Charles Coffin books. But the green ones, I don't see the green ones too often. Drumbeat of the Nation. Let's see, once again, a Civil War book. The First Period of the War of the Rebellion, 1898. Let's see, we have a Sergeant Hart nailing the colors to the flagstaff of Fort Sumter. Boys of 1776. Okay, so this one is Revolutionary War independence related. The Boys of 76, A History of the Battle of the Revolution by Charles Carlton Coffin, illustrated 1898. See what we got here. The Alarm. Got Mr. Paul Revere there on his midnight ride. Um, I'm trying to think what other. So there's the four Civil War volumes. Um, there's this one on the Revolutionary War. Um, trying to think what other volumes. I think there's one, at least one volume on Colonial America. Or maybe that's that first one, The Building of America. I'm thinking there might be at least one other Charles Carlton Coffin book. It's been a while since I've had any of those. Yet. Betty Crocker cookbook. It's the rare pie or the pie front cover one that everyone wants. Pretty exciting. That's a maybe a twenty-five dollar cookbook. These came from Max. Uh, he sells on eBay and whatnot. You can find him on Instagram, Common Ground Finds. What did I do with this? There we go. Common Ground Finds. He actually has a big whatnot show tonight. You def or today you definitely need to check out. That starts at noon central. Uh, he's auctioning off 200 books. Plus he has all kinds of add-ons and stuff. Plus you can find Common Ground Finds on eBay. He has, I think, almost 20,000 books on eBay. A Nemesis of Miss Government. I think this one's political. A Nemesis of Misgovernment by J.W. Buell. Republican, Republican, monarchical, and empirical governments. Illustrated 1899. Cool book on political history, economics, political philosophy, government corruption. These ones also came from Max. Again, with Common Ground Finds. You can also find him on Instagram, YouTube. He's Paper Gold Podcast on YouTube. He has pretty cool YouTube channel. Actually, he interviewed me for his YouTube channel about two months ago. If you look up Paper Gold Podcast, Ken Gentiman, or KG's Books, I think you'll find it. All right, we have Uncle Tom's Cabin. Nice old copy of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Nice cover on that one. Uh, and then there's a two volume set of cakes and ale. Cakes and ale by Douglas, by Douglas Gerald, 1842, complete in two volumes. It's kind of a comic, comic novel. See if there's any other illustrations. No, nope, just the frontispiece and decorative title page, but that is complete in two volumes, 1842. And check out the decorative spines. 
Looks like you got the biscuits, you got the wine goblets or the ale goblets. Very nice, 1842. All right, four more boxes. Again, everyone, feel free to throw a comment down there if you got any questions or comments. If you just want to say hi, tell me where you're from. Feel free to hit that like button as well. Appreciate y'all tuning into my YouTube videos. I hope they're entertaining. All right, let's see if I can get these out without making a big mess all over the floor. What do we got? We got Fireside Reading. We got five volumes. I don't know if this one's complete, but we got historical sketches. We got travel and adventure. We got anecdotes of animals. Did that person use a priority box for media mail label? Um, nope, they did ship that one priority. But I, at least once a week, someone does that. <laughs> and they get away with it somehow. Oh, man. Post office isn't always the most efficient uh, organization, I guess we could say. Uh, traits and anecdotes of animals illustrating their natural history, habitats, and instincts. Edited by Reverend D.W. Clark, 1866. I don't know if these, any of these are illustrated. Nope, doesn't look like it. Let's see. Tra traits and anecdotes of the fox. Stealing along in the dark of evening, the cunning and rapacious fox, Canis... Mm -hmm. Vulpes uh, leaves his hole of the earth and roams in search of his prey. The poultry yards, rabbit warrens, and the haunts of game tell of his skillful, his skillful dep depredations, but he is not all difficult in his appetite. To be sure, when he can get ripe grapes, he has a feast. If young turkeys and hares are not to be had, he puts up with a young fawn a wild duck, or even weasels, mice, frogs, or insects. 1866, Anecdotes of Animals. Oh, I already showed those two. Uh, True Tales for the Spare Hours, just a, looks like a little book of short stories. And then Anecdotes of Birds and Fishes. Oh, that's another fun one. Again, 1866, uh, Anecdotes of Books of Birds and Fishes. Really, really great condition. Those are awesome. Let's see what else I got from that seller. All right, three more boxes after this. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully I'll be done in under an hour. That'd be great. Uh, we got the poetical works of Whittier. The Poetical Works of John Greenleaf Whittier, illustrated. Let's see, I'm guessing 1880s or 1890s. Looks like 1892. Nothing too exciting to show about that one. It was nicely illustrated. Pretty binding on that one. Gilt edges. Very nice. All right, I thought this one was pretty cool. The Secrets of the Liquor Merchant Revealed by M. I. Fogelsonger. Fogelsonger. Uh, dust jacket's a little beat up, but the book underneath is beautiful. Secrets of the Liquor Mer Merchants Revealed. Uh, the Secrets of the Liquor Merchant Revealed or the Art of Manufacturing the Various Kinds of qu and Qualities of Brandies, Whiskies, Gins, Rums, Bitters, Wines, Cordy, cordials, syrups, etc. 
by the use of the different essential oils, essences, etc., together with full directions for the making of all kinds of essences, extracts, coloring, etc., by M. I. Vogelsanger, 1933. Kind of really cool prohibition era. Um, I guess I don't know if you'd call it a bartender or liquor manufacturing book. This one's awesome. Again, really nice condition with the uh, dust jacket. Formic ether, benzon ether, amyl acetate, amyl butrate, amyl valorantate, mitris ether, oonic ether, bending oil, oil of sweet almonds, eight ounces. Sulfuric acid, chemically pure, two ounces, mix them. When cool, neutralize them with ammonia, 26 degrees bomb, and then dilute with double the volume of proof spirits. This is used extensively to give an artificial bend to low proof liquors by adding one ounce of, be of beating oil to 40 gallons. The same effect may be secured by filtering through starch or wheat bran. Very cool liquor manufacturing book from 1933. I like that one. That one's special. Very, very special. All right, three more boxes, and I'm going to get on to the next project for the day. What are you all doing? Doing anything exciting? Mowing your lawns? Planting your gardens? I do have to weed my strawberry bed. Plus, I do want to get a little bit uh, more of my yard ready. I want to... I don't know what else I'm going to plant. I'm for sure going to plant some apple trees. Um, maybe some sort of blueberry and raspberry patch. Maybe some tomatoes. I don't know. I'm not good at keeping up on weeding, so it's probably a waste of time. But I want to want to get a little bit more into homesteading, you know, in all my free time. Books do tend to keep me pretty busy. All right, we got a bunch of the Story of Nations books. We got the History of Persia. Again, um, my customers love these. Uh, that's 1887. They're all nicely illustrated. Usually they start with a map. Okay, that one doesn't have a map in the front. It has a map, it has a map somewhere, I swear. They all have at least one map. Usually they have, some of them have two or three maps. And then they have a bunch of other illustrations as well. There you go. We got a Persian cavalry man from an ancient sculpture. Check out the armor on him. So we got the history of Persia. We got the history of Rome. And actually, I'm trying to think what volumes of those I have up on eBay right now. Um, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like I have seven up on eBay right now. Nope, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I got 16. I have at least 16 of these uh, History of Nations up on eBay right now. Plus, um, I'm working on listing some right now. So there'll be 20 some up on eBay. In there. And then plus these will go up on eBay probably in about two weeks. So History of Sicily. So if you see any titles you like, History of the Goths. We got early Britain, we got Phoenicia, we got the history of Norway, the history of Carthage, lots of great um, medieval and ancient history in all these books. Another history of Norway, okay, two of those. We got the Byzantine Empire, we have the Saracens, history of Holland, and the history of Hungary. Um, a lot of these I buy, I know they printed some in the U.S. Let's see, yeah, that one was published in New York. Quite a few. I think all of the ones I have on eBay right now were published in the U.K., mostly in London. So, yeah, quite a few of those I have been buying overseas from the U.K. Actually, I, I bought one um, book, box of books from the UK like a month and a half ago. Um, it was a bunch of annual registers. 
and I think it had the first one with the maps, and then it had the annual register that had the Constitution. Was that the 1789 one? Um, and they made it to the U.S. They made it to Tennessee, and then the tracking kept updating in Tennessee, like day after day after day for like the last month. And then finally, the tracking updated that they were disposing of the package. Um, so that wasn't ideal. I really wanted those books. I think I paid over a thousand dollars for them. So that was a tiny bit disappointing. And I still have a tiny little shred of hope that they show up at uh, here someday. Sometimes shipping is very strange where things will get delayed for weeks and weeks and then just magically show up. There's hope. All right, we got the historical writings of John Fisk. Got Dutch and colonial or Dutch and Quaker colonies in America, the beginning of New England, Old Virginia, and her neighbors. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, so this is complete in twelve volumes. Discovery of America, Old Virginia. Again, Discovery of America, one and two. That was volume three. We got the American Revolution, complete in two volumes. I think these are all probably copyright 1902. Yep, copyright 1902. Uh, the critical period of American history. This covers the period of, during the Constitution, right after the Revolutionary War. Uh, looks like 1783 to 1789. So, yep, right after the Revolutionary War. New France and New England, and then Volume 2 of the Dutch and Quaker Colonies in America. All right, last box. And we're at 52 minutes. Perfect. Keeping it under an hour. That's what I like. a few projects I need to mow the lawn it's been too wet here to mow for a while yikes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one twelve so this one's complete in 12 volumes uh but the mississippi valley in the civil war looks a little bit like that completely junk moldy moisture damage so that one's a dud don't think anyone's gonna want that one. Um, these, so these are the historic or miscellaneous writings. John Fisk got a century of science. You got civil government of the U.S. I think one, at least one of the other volumes. We had the outlines of cosmic philosophy. Call Don. Yeah, Don. Don will take it. Oh shoot, there's a book for Don. I'm putting on Don's pile. <laughs> Ah, uh, shoot, and that was Outlines of Cosmic Philosophy, Volume 1, so that's a four-volume set, so I guess that set is not complete anymore, but we do have Cosmic Philosophy 234. Uh, we have Myths and Myth Makers, that's always a good one. I think, actually, I, I think I have a nice leather volume, Myth and Myth Makers, on eBay right now. And then the unseen world and other essays. Yeah. yeah.